What's up, friends? How's everyone? So we break it up a little bit, pull over here in the shade, and we'll do a little walk around video instead of my talking head driving. Okay? Is that all right? You guys down with that? All right, well, here we go. Majority wins. 1972 Ford Bronco. This one built obviously in the derelict style. It is number 91. And uh, you know what, for, for again, a little change of pace, let's just go from the front to the back and I'll walk you guys through it. The paint on this truck is original. The bumper on this truck, both of them are original. So they got a little bumpsy bruises and stuff going on. But again, with a derelict, that's part of the charm. It's funny because it looks like the previous owner try to give himself an upgrade to a higher trim package with an aerosol can and he silvered out the grill. Not really the best executed craftsmanship, but he gets a, maybe a D for effort. But again, for us, it's cool. It works out just fine. This is, you can tell by the new Battlestar Galactica hideous, uh, in my humble opinion, engine cover. This is the later gen Coyote that we've recently transitioned to using. So a little bit more power, a little bit more complexity and tuning, um, but really nice. And it, it has a lower idle. So it's like 750 with the AC on, it's super chill. So a little bit more power. I think these are pushing out close to 450 now, comparable amount of torque. The learning curve on it kind of sucked because we even had to redesign our intake plenum, reposition our mass airflow, run ported vacuum to the aeromotive uh, fuel regulator and a bunch of other things that Ford didn't bother to tell us in the owner's manual. Thanks, kids. Power-wise, uh, we go from the Cayo to the Ford AOD automatic tranny, which in turn sending power through to the Atlas two twin stick shift on the fly part-time four-wheel drive transfer case, 1310U joints down to in the front. We have a high pinion 44 front axle. So made by our buddies at Curry. These are powder coated all the way down to the housings. And then, of course, we've got the Icon Sport Brakes from Brembo, so six pot in the front, T4041 hardware oversized rotors, but you can never have too much brakes. We're running coilover, of course, all Icon run coilover. Here you'll see the tunable sway bar situation. And then this one is running the sport suspension, which means, you know, again, they're all coilover, but with the sport suspension, you get the remote canisters, nitrogen charge, and two rates of tunability on the cans. So right up here at the top, you've got high speed, fast rebound, and low speed reaction. And it really gives you a lot of nice control. You can really reel it in. Eibach is our partner for the coils. Moving out board, of course, my beloved BF Goodrich, always all terrains in this case the icon forged aluminum wheels vintage style ford hubcaps but they're actually brand new and acid treated so it gave us the funk and the bunk which we dig as with all derelicts you're always going to have the derelict badge of honor so that's uh made out of spun pewter and then uh, copper plated this badge though is original to the truck it's been around its whole life experience we do convert to the gas shocks for the lift gate we convert to the gas shocks for the hood we convert to the chains for the tailgate drop and get away from those gacky elbow joints because they just rattle too much even on the derelicts um i always talk about it in the comments i don't think i usually talk about it in the video but people are always asking what's up with this id plate more specifically what the heck's up with the nike swoosh so now on camera, for once and for all, I am going to settle the mystery. We're dear friends with Nike. We've been playing with Nike for 12 years as a business. And when I was a kid, it's actually sponsored by Nike. So I, I've just always dug Nike and they've got such a great culture. So many years ago, we were invited up to a tour at Nike headquarters and they wanted us to bring one of our vehicles for this really cool show they do once a year. And it's all about industrial design, but from yin to yang, like pretty much no shoes, but like 
audio equipment, sports gear, vehicles, bicycles, motorcycles, surfboards, all sorts of stuff. And I think it's, it's a really neat thing because what they want to do is keep all of their design engineers or designers and engineers, they don't want them to have blinders on and just be shoe, 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 sports gear, sports gear. So they really just want to express what the team thinks is super cool in the world of design so they see new trends and materials and can find inspiration. So I guess uh, it's an honor that they thought they could be inspired by us. So we got invited and I was speaking to the CEO of Nike at the time and he said, you know, if you ever have a project that within 12 months we can go from ideation sketches to done physical product, let me know. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, you know what they call the kitchen, which is like the deep, dark, hidden skunk works. It's literally underground on the Beaverton campus in Oregon where they do all sorts of really crazy stuff. I mean, like they've got CNC machines that if you called Haas, they'd say, yeah, we don't make those. And Nike has like five in a line. So it's kid in a candy store opportunity for me. So anyway, he said they have a lot of turnover there. And he really wants to help keep people engaged. And the problem was so much of it was like advanced conceptual product that never made it to product that the guys get kind of disheartened. So when Jim Farley, who I'd worked with at Toyota, moved over to Ford and they called me and he said, or I think he sent me an email, whatever. Hey, what about a new Bronco? And I said, hell yeah, let's do an Icon Bronco. He said, all right, well, let's build one for SEMA. And I counter, well, I don't really want to do a bling bling SEMA truck, but I want to engineer one because it's one of the all time most requested icons that, or models that Icon could do. So we got Ford support and we started the project, and immediately a little bell went off in my sad little brain. I went, oh, wait, I should call Nike. So I did. So that's why the swoosh is on here. It's a long story, but I get asked all the time. So that's sort of a casual nod because they were incredibly helpful partners, both from sourcing to advanced machining techniques, to uh, textiles, uh, on and on and on. And uh, they really helped us elevate our product. So we're happy to continue to work with them. The other cool thing is now over the years, like a bunch of Nike execs have icons. So we love that. We left the roached rear view mirror. We put new glass in it. It's nice and solid still. But, you know, how you, how you going to beat that, right? Got to leave it. You know, with all the derelicts, a lot of times people think we just take the body and put on a different chassis and powertrain. The body is forensically disassembled to the extent that a fully restored one is. We just very carefully don't alter and we really work hard to preserve the visible paint. But the underside and the floors are all media blasted to white metal. And then they are re-caulked, re-etched reprimed and sealed and then the heat cured polyurea and then every whisker every gasket every piece of weather stripping and generally all the glass is brand new it's literally just the visible paint surfaces that are kept original but you know down to the hardware in here where you see all our stainless steel button head hardware all that stuff's always handled each and every time we just go through a lot of work to make it look like we did nothing. Moving on to the interior, we did the bison hide, which I love, as you guys know, we use it a lot. This bison is from an alternate supplier I wanted to try out down in Texas. It's a little bit more grain contrast. I'm not sure which I prefer, but for this it worked out killer because that lighter grain contrast complemented this super funky plaid that we scored from our buddy Josh at Relicate. He's uh, gotten into reproducing a pretty extensive line of retro tweeds, herring bones, and plaids, mostly from German OEM apps, but whatever. I don't think anyone's going to know any better. Original armrest, leather wrapped, of course. <clears throat> I, you know my love affair with plastic. Uh, so we CNC these and get rid of the plastic ones. They fall apart in about six months. The OEM ones fell apart in about 10 years. The modern aftermarket ones six months at best. We did do the power windows and we did do the power door locks. Um, and then the power windows, as you know, you just nudge the analog crank to go down and duh, nudge it up to go up. But what's kind of neat with them is if you double nudge it, all windows go down and that circuit can control up to six windows for that rare application we've yet to do. 
but you got to plan for the future, right? Gauges, of course, we're doing the old school style gauges in this particular truck. Um, so made for us by Dakota Digital, backlit LED. You have a series of different functions through the hidden micro switches um, where you can mark your max water temp that has occurred, max RPM, max speed. You can uh, see analog versions of all your principal readouts. And then on the second screen, you have multiple trip meters. You have zero to 60, you have quarter mile. You can do all sorts of stupid stuff, which I don't know if anyone ever bothers to, but it's there if you ever care to. This textile pattern with our CNC chromed LED underlit door spears normally continue to the cargo area, but on this truck, we did no cargo panels because this was a low trim truck and it was kind of part of the truck's vibe. So for that, since we housed the rear speakers back there, we went ahead and just fabbed some simple boxes and powder coat them in the same finish that you see our recline hardware, console, door cups, and many other little trinkets and details. The recent change you may have seen in some videos lately where we went back to the earlier style two-spoke steering wheel. Of course, it's a tilt column. It has a breakaway point for safety, and so does the Borgeson intermediary link in the engine bay. AC vents, built aluminum, not plastic, chromed metal, not plastic. Uh, this is the overdrive switch. So with the automatics, we always give you manual overdrive on off brake hood this client requested what we normally reserve for the new school builds with our sport pedals because he digs them he has several icons so he knows all the little nuances and difference so we honored that and then moving up to the visors same situation there this guy really just fell in love with the functionality of our aircraft visors from new school so you know these have multi-axis of rotation and they're just, I mean, as visors go, they're the best damn visors I've ever experienced. While we're up top here, the headliner, we went with a darker color than we normally go with, but it just seemed to fit the color palette of this truck. And then we also geeked out and color matched, well, color matched-ish, his seat belts. They didn't have a weave that was spot on, but good enough for government work. Icon center console, which you're pretty familiar with by now. So gas, shock, gun rated safe, it's stainless steel construction, all top quality hardware, separate security door for audio. And then that also has dual magnets on it. So when it's in the open position, it doesn't rattle because I hate my rattles. We're also running the removable Ford OEM cup holders on the front and the rear. This has the Icon pen, which is super groovy. You can buy those on the website if you're so inclined. So they're, uh, a nice sort of rifle action, high quality pen. These are actually made for us in Germany and they come with every icon or you can get just the darn pen. ARB locking differentials. So there you see that panel for it. Again, we color matched it in the sort of brown bronze finish to match this interior vibe. So you have front and rear locking differentials, lights, a wiper, washer, a fan, a vent, and temp, which is basically our old school layout, but applied to the derelicts. This dash is all new construction. This is our design. It rakes out more than stock to make room for the HVAC. But we had some fun because it's a common leak spot on the original trucks. So when we patina painted this dash, we went ahead and emulated that leak all the way across the front. Trust me, the leak no longer exists. It's just faux patina. Everyone relax. And then a bonus icon lizard. Normally there's only one per truck. This one I'll show you is on the rear quarter panel, but this client loves the lizard. He's like, I really like to look at it too. Can we put one on the center dash? And uh, being how many icons he has, I'm really not in a position to say no. So we done did. Rear view mirrors uh, powered, so auto dimming at night, which sounds silly, but it's actually really helpful. And then you've got our amp research powered steps, which are also lit. And those just make such a big difference. Um, people spec out a Bronco on the site and they do not select that option. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like night and day difference in ingress. Look, I'm in. And I'm out.
Now watch my sorry. I'm five ten ish. Let's pretend that's not there. Like, are you kidding me? It's like stirrup up. It's super awkward. I think it sucks. So that's why we highly recommend that option. On cut, of course, we've yet to build a cut icon Bronco, and that pleases me greatly. When we engineered this chassis with Art Morrison, that was a paramount goal for us. So, you know, we're running just under a 33 inch tire, but see what happens is the original leaf spring trucks, as you travel up, the axle actually travels rearward. So that's why everyone's always cut them and flared them back in the day. With our coilover suspension architecture, we are true linear when going up. So the wheel goes straight up or on camber, it'll tuck, which is why we never cut them. To me, this line, especially the continuity of how this line relates to passenger cars and vans and everything from Ford in the day, to me is like a key part of the character. This was a factory truck ordered with two tanks. My single tank's bigger than the factory two tanks were. And we don't have room for another one. So this is like you're going on a hike or you're going surfing. We cap it on the inside. Try the key, don't tell anybody. Okay, it's gonna be our secret. And then of course we geeked out and acid etched those because you can have a brand new cap. LEDs, but stock housing. The Icon tire carrier assembly. Client ordered the optional uh, super powerful reverse light. Uh, cargo area, of course, we did the tuck and tumble two passenger bench. Um, these are great. They actuate with ease. The only bummer is if you want to remove it, you're still left with all these armatures everywhere. But frankly, I don't think anyone cares or ever removes it. Cargo points, ridiculously overrated. I think max tie down rates those at 5,000 pounds or something absurd. But they are really nice for securing your gear in the back. Then, of course, the Icon cage, we did some light patining on it. Um, so it's a four point, beautiful welds. Uh, we make that right here in Cali. The Icon spare tire carrier option. So fluted main shank, three axis brace to the chassis, greasable. It goes up through the flutes. Um, this is your wiring to get to the license plate and reverse light. They're super stout and they isolate the carrier to the frame and not the body. The factory ones were on the passenger side and they block the Ford graphic, which seems kind of weird. Plus visibility wise, it, it blocks a lot of your view. So we just put the original bolts back on the holes, took the carrier off and we used ours. And man, the stock ones, if you guys have an old Bronco, you know what I'm talking about. Just an absurd amount of rattles and it's just not necessary. Use those gas shocks I was telling you about earlier so you don't have to deal with the guillotine effect of the uh, stock system, works out well. What else we got? I hit a reverse camera. This one has the elevated audio system, so CD, HD, nav, uh, blah, 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 with the Focal audio speakers and bass in the reverse cam. Good old supply chain struggles of 2022. We ran out of our beloved uh, NEX head units we normally use. So we ran an Alpine in this truck. Is it just me or do they suck? Like the whole user interface of it, like you're constantly lost and most of the screens you have to go through don't even do anything. Um, hoping before I ship this, I'm able to put the NEX back in this. Again, because the guy who owns this is really a good client and has become a good friend. And he's used to that system because that's what's in the rest of his trucks. Rear axle. So the rear axle is a monstrous Dana 60 based unit. It's a high pinion. Again, completely etched and powder coated, built by our buddies at Curry. There you see the Brembo four pots and then the dedicated mechanical brake for the parking brake. Um, fuel tank, I don't know if that's an interesting discussion, but I guess while I'm blowing out my knees and I'm down here, we can talk about it a little bit. It's made in California by our buddies at Transfer Flow specifically for us. So what's nice about it is they're what's called a tier two. So it's not like your typical aftermarket gas tank where they really have to focus on price, not function. These guys do like ambulances and specialty built 
niche platforms, fire trucks and stuff like that. So they're really good at maintaining the OEM quality. First and foremost, it's steel. It's not one of those blow molded plastic things. 21 gallons. We run a charcoal canister. We run a sealed cap. And then it has rollover valve that'll interrupt fuel supply. And then the fuel pump is an OEM style pump that is in tank with sumps and baffles. Again, most they're like the easy way to go is you run one of those cheesy 12 volt like inline fuel pumps that go somewhere on your frame rail, but they don't last. They're loud, and I don't even think they could keep up with the coyote if they wanted to anyway. Got the Icon Lizard. In this particular case, that's where he felt like being. So he's on the rear quarter up high. And then you can just see a little bit of the TIG welded Borla stainless steel exhaust system. Now this is the restrained version. You can tell because of that resonator near the tailpipe. And then there's a principal muffler midship. Um, but the Rowdy is annoying rowdy. This client is not only supported Icon by buying vehicles, but he's supported the geek in me nights and weekends, ordered all sorts of cool custom leather gear from like fly fishing reels to bags to wallets, all sorts of fun stuff. And a while ago, I made him a saddle bag based on an old Calvary bag from, I think it was, I don't know. I mean, it was old. I still have the remnant, but anyway, I reversed it and patterned it. So I took some of the extra bison and some of the extra lining. It's not finished yet. I haven't done the stays or the Icon Lizard, but it's kind of a neat design because it fits right between the posts on the headrest. So it's sort of like a cool co-pilot bag. When you run under the headrest, you've got gear on the front, you've got gear on the B side. And then if you want to take it out and about, I don't know, you might look like you're trying to be a Western star but in general theory, it rests on your shoulder. Um, but that was kind of fun, and uh, it's a nice way to be efficient with all the leftover gear when we're building stuff. That's all I got. Do you guys like the break from routine? A little different format there. Hopefully we put enough B-roll in there. You didn't have to look at me for too long. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. Please be kind to yourself, be kind to others. See y'all next